From the banks of the Ohio River to the twin spires of Churchill Downs, there is a vibrant and alluring air about Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome to the joy of music. Today we will pay a musical visit to Louisville, featuring music from the Aeolian Skinner organ of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and my special musical guest, Metropolitan Opera Soprano, Marilyn Mims.
Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby are the most famous attractions of Louisville. Dawn at the Downs or a day at the races beneath the majestic twin spires offers a panoramic view of flower gardens, the beauty of thoroughbreds parading in the paddock, the charm and grace of the clubhouse, the shaded terraces and brick paved courtyards. Churchill Downs is truly an amazing attraction. Home of the Kentucky Derby, the annual run for the roses is said to be the greatest two minutes in sports. has a very diverse musical history and is a regional center for culture and the arts. Metropolitan Opera soprano Marilyn Mims, who calls Louisville her home, is one of the leading stars in the field of opera today. It is our very great pleasure to welcome Marilyn to the joy of music today.
It's a very great pleasure for me to welcome to the Joy Music today, Marilyn Mims, a soprano who is one of the great young stars in the opera world today. Welcome to the Joy Music, Marilyn. Thank you, Diane. It's my pleasure. I suppose one of the questions that people like to ask you is when did you discover that you had such a beautiful voice? I discovered I had a voice when I was very young and then it began to develop as I got into high school and college and I uh, began to be interested in voice lessons and developing my my head voice instead of just the natural voice and uh, I got involved in, in the opera world that way. Where did you first start singing though? Did you sing like at church or in school? Yes, church was the first place and then uh, I had many opportunities in grammar school, junior high and high school. Um, I was a piano major mm -hmm. but I had to study voice and you had to study voice, voice in high school. one. Oh, voice one <laughs> in college, but it, it all started in school in church. I got a lot of experience in church, and um, you know, when you're interested in something, you have a passion for something. It's just an automatic <laughs> thing you do. You find mm -hmm. ways to improve and and grow, and it's become my career. How did you get interested in opera? When I saw my first opera, I had when no was idea. That? When I was 17, I was a freshman at University of Southern Mississippi, and I'd always been interested in singing and music and all the arts, but I had never had the opportunity to, to see it in, in a, a combined setting like this. And the visual spectacle was just so impressive to me that that I, I had to find out how I could become involved. So I signed up for opera workshop, and my first role was Musetta in La Boheme. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband was my Marcello. My future husband was Marcello, and that's how our romance developed was in La Boheme, my first opera. What is the most important thing to you as a person and as an opera singer? To give happiness to others, but also to yourself by giving yourself the peace of, of knowing that there's, there's a higher power that can take care of any problem, any any um, uh, detour, any, any obstacle. And life is full of these obstacles. But nothing is impossible because we're not alone. We have, we have the joy and the love of our God and our Lord that, that continues to bolster us in a very difficult profession, a very right. demanding profession. And uh, we don't ever have to despair, even though sometimes we, we are on the edge of that. We can always have the peace and the comfort of that uh, to fall back on. The peace that God can give you. Yes. yes. And that's being a person, not a singer, not a career woman, but being a person. And uh, I think the kind of person you are is the kind of performer you are. You have such a wonderful gift, Marilyn. We thank you so much for being on the Joy Music and sharing it with thank us. Thank you. I had a great time. Thank you. In 1778, Louisville officially became a town, taking its name from King Louis XVI of France in gratitude for his nation's help in the Revolutionary War. In those early river trading days, Louisville earned its reputation for hospitality, and visitors have been coming to Louisville ever since to enjoy its southern charm and northern sophistication. has a very diverse musical history and is a regional center for both culture and the arts.
is the home of the Falls Fountain Water Sculpture, the world's tallest computerized floating fountain. The home of the first electric trolley is also found in Louisville. It is the favorite mode of transportation to the thousands of visitors who come to Louisville every year. The Calliope calls, and passengers make their way up the gangplank onto the Belle of Louisville for an old-fashioned cruise on the Ohio River. Built in 1914, and recently named an historic landmark, the Belle of Louisville is the oldest operating Mississippi-style sternwheel steamboat in existence. It's most unusual, Travis, to meet a calliopus on a riverboat. Can you tell us something about the, the riverboat that we're on? Well, the boat is the Belle of Louisville. She's the oldest authentic Mississippi River-style sternwheel steamboat, still in existence today, built in 1914 as a ferry boat. Later became um, an excursion boat, which is what she is now, running for passengers. She's had three different names and had a very interesting history behind her. And how many trips a day does it take around the river? Here in Louisville, we run approximately two to three trips a day on average. And do you play the calliope on all those trips? Just about all of them. On some of our charters, they request not to have the calliope. If it's they want night. it, I'm here. It's at night also. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And what kind of music do you play on this calliope? Um, basically folk music. Every now and then I'll break away and do some Broadway or things like that. Something different once in a while. We notice that the keyboard is very short. Is it so you can just play very limited things? I mean, you, you wouldn't play anything classical, would you? There wouldn't be much room for it. <laughs> um, actually, this is a deluxe steam calliope, believe it or not. Um, when the instrument was first patented in 1850 by Joshua Stoddard of Worcester, Vermont, his idea was to replace the church bell, summoning worshipers to church. Is that right? Uh-huh. And it was an eight-note instrument then. But Needless. now how many notes is it? The one we have now is 32. Uh -huh. um, the most common ones during the heyday of the excursion boat era were either 21 or 28 notes. Well, thank you, Travis, for being on The Joy of Music. It's a real joy to hear this calliope. Oh, you're welcome. It's a treat for me. bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Let's take a visit to the Louisville Zoo. of both adults and children is the Louisville Zoo. The zoo is located on 73 rolling acres in the heart of Louisville. 
it exhibits more than 1,300 animals in an open, naturalistic environment. for joining us on our musical visit to Louisville. We hope you have enjoyed the varied and interesting sights of this remarkable river city, as well as the beautiful sounds of my musical guest, soprano Marilyn Mims, and the organ of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. We look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music for another exciting adventure in music.